Hello, in this video I'm showing you a nice example of a spiral adenoma, which is another type of benign skin sweat gland tumour. Uh, it's one of the classically painful skin tumours, um, so is often removed and excised if it's causing pain for the patient. Uh, and it typically presents uh, with this appearance of a very well circumscribed uh, and nodular blue basaloid appearing tumour in the dermis, usually without an apparent epidermal connection. And <clears throat> it's composed of these islands of blue looking basaloid epithelial cells and very often in spiradenoma you tend to get a stroma that's rather um, edematous um, like you can see over here where it's rather loose and often also quite vascular as well, uh, which you can see more in, in this portion of the tumour here, where in between the epithelial component, you've got these quite prominent uh, blood vessels filled with blood. So that, that's quite a common finding, which is apparent on, on the low power here. Uh, if we go now on to higher power to look at some of the features we see on higher power, or well, one thing, first of all, you tend to find somewhere in the tumour if you, if you hunt around for it, is evidence of ductal differentiation. This is a type of sweat gland tumour, so usually within the tumour you can find evidence of sweat duct differentiation, and I've just circled an area here where you can see within the epithelial component there is evidence of duct formation with this rather hard-edged um, cuticle forming here, and some, some more down here. There's a lumen there, and another lumen there, and I think probably one there as well. So you can find evidence of sweat duct differentiation within the tumour. And then the tumour itself tends to have um, uh, often three different components to it, two, two different types of um, epithelium, uh, which is typically a slightly darker looking uh, epithelial component, often towards the edge of the tumour nests, where the cells have scanter cytoplasm, giving them that more basaloid appearance. And then often more in the centre of the islands, the cells have slightly more abundant cytoplasm, giving them a slightly paler and slightly more squamoid looking appearance to them. And then the third component that you very often find uh, in this tumour is, um, is lymphocytes, um, which you can see here is these small dark hyperchromatic nuclei. And these very frequently are found just sprinkled throughout spiradenomas, al almost universally really. Um, so here, here's a lymphocyte, another lymphocyte, another lymphocyte here, just finely dispersed throughout the, the epithelial component of the tumour. So this is all quite characteristic of spiradenoma. So to summarise, very well circumscribed nodular blue looking tumour in the dermis, usually without an epidermal connection, an edematous and vascular stroma, evidence of ductal differentiation and two types of epithelial cells, a more basaloid cell with scant cytoplasm and a slightly more paler squamoid looking epithelial cell component with more cytoplasm and that sprinkling of lymphocytes throughout the tumour. Uh, these tumours can show some degree of morphological overlap with cylindromas which show a similar basaloid and more squamoid cell component. Uh, but the arrangement of the tumour is slightly different. If you watch the Cylindroma movie I've made, you'll see that the Cylindroma it has arranged in that um, jigsaw pattern uh, arrangement, often with the hyaline mantles and hyaline droplets within them. Uh, but both these tumour types, um, the spiradenoma, can also be seen as part of the brooks spiegler syndrome in patients with inherited mutations of the CYLD gene where they get multiple cylindromas and spiradenomas and often trichoepitheliomas as well. Uh, and just a final comment to make about spiradenomas, just to be aware that rarely these can undergo malignant transformations into spiradenocarcinomas. Typically, you find a benign appearing spiradenoma within the tumour and then adjacent to it an area that has transformed into uh, spiradenocarcinoma and looks morphologically distinct uh, and we tend to recognise um, 
a low-grade type of spiradenocarcinoma and also a high-grade spiradenocarcinoma. The high-grade spiradenocarcinoma is usually quite obvious um, with a rather frankly malignant looking um, adenocarcinoma arising adjacent to an area of more typical benign spiradenoma. And then the low-grade spiradenoma is often more subtle histologically and, and, and can sometimes be quite easily overlooked. Um, but again, usually there's a nodular area within the tumour that just looks slightly distinct. And if within that area of low-grade spiradenocarcinoma, what you tend to see is, is loss of that dual cell population. Uh, so there's just a single epithelial component within these low-grade spiradenocarcinoma, which shows evidence of atypia with enlarged cells and often presence of nucleoli and mitotic activity. Uh, and often loss of the lymphoid uh, infiltration of the tumour as well. So although rare, always important to look closely at all areas of spiradenomas just to make sure there are no areas that look slightly different or distinct and just have a look at those with slightly more scrutiny to be sure uh, there isn't evidence that the spiradenoma has transformed into spiradenocarcinoma.